Hello. You know, that wasn't too bad. Well, I'm just here to go over a, a, a few top level 20,000, 10,000 feet up features of Mira 7.1. It is finally here, and for us, that is a big deal. It's been a long journey, especially starting with the, even with Mira 6.2 going in the 7, then keeping on drudging away, getting those features in there, and I really feel like 7.1 is a it's a very exciting point for the, the, the history of, of the Mira platform and what we're trying to do, do with it. Um, so I'm going to go over a couple features here, and then we'll, we'll, uh, I'll introduce Sean. First off, hey, I, it's been around for a little bit, but it, it was not our production release of, the, of Mira, so we can finally say, now that Mira 7.1 is the production release of Mira, that we have uh, an official Mira 7.1 Docker image on Docker Hub. It is a fantastic way, and you will, if you go to the workshop tomorrow, you can get your toes wet with it. It's a fantastic way to, to abstract what Mira is and its core and use it for just its own, use Mira for its service and not have to worry about all the files and all the, the architecture and all the, like, the ports and stuff. It's fantastic. So I recommend, if, you, if you're interested in that, going to the workshop tomorrow. But I'm very proud of the fact that we at Blue River have embraced the Docker and containerization and we are approaching our project and development as kind of containerization first and Docker first uh, uh, mentality. If you look into the file system of 7.1, you will notice that uh, we kind of moved some files around when we were, we apologize if for any kind of conversion, uh, kind of like updating issues, but I don't, don't think you, there should be many at all. Um, but we're bringing out uh, everything to the top level into a modular format where everything is in its nice directory-based, convention-based format, which allows you to have uh, global modules. And yes, I said modules. Instead of display objects, they're called modules in 7.1. Uh, it's just a word, and if you have a display objects directory, it will, they'll be found and used. Uh, but we started realizing with the new 7.0 module or display object format that we were building things that had nothing to do with displaying content on a page. Um, so the name started to stick out. It was like, that is not what these things are anymore. These are, these are just modules. Um, you can do lots and lots of cool stuff with it. And as well as global themes. So now when you install Mirror, there's actually just a global, the themes directory. You can still have your themes and your modules at a site level or theme, or, uh, but now it defaults to a global theme. So as you install more sites, you can all use that global theme and you get to choose when you want to use an alternate theme for whenever you're, if you have a multi-homed instance with more than one site, you get to choose with whether they use the same theme or not. Um, we have smarter event handling. So pre-7.1, when you wanted to register an event listener, you'd register them for a it, like a class or a type of object. So you'd say, if you have a widget in any, you'd say on widget save or on widget before save, and you'd, and you'd, uh, you could listen to that for that event, you could handle that event when it happens contextually. Um, with 7.1, we have a more uh, focused way of registering events. You can actually register an event uh, directly to an instance of an object, which allows you to say, be a little bit more like a, I guess JavaScript. So if you have a particular button on the page and you want to make it so on click of that one button, not on click of all buttons, but on click of this one button, or you can have an event listener to handle that event specifically for that object or object instance. For these examples, it's just showing me how you know we're loading a specific content node and registering an event handler for that specific nodes on render event, or sorry, on a render start event. As well as backing out a little bit further, you notice the second option here, we're actually registering that content event for a specific uh, global, I'm sorry, registering a global event for on render start. So pre 7.1, on render start was a site level event. You couldn't, you had to register that at a per site basis. So if you had to 
If you say you wanted to have a render start event, you'd have to actually loop through all your sites, globally apply it, each one. So now we just have it abstracted for you so you can just register. Oh, that, that's actually right there, the global, the global config. Sorry. Um, we have improved feed API. So we're very, some of this right here came out in seven, but we're still very excited about it, having more human readable querying uh, API to allow people to almost be able to, to guess uh, the syntax for getting either like server side, uh, you know, iterators or even in JavaScript with MirrorJS to have a client side uh, 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 JavaScript framework to allow you to access mirror content as well. Do you notice the first one is CS script and the bottom one is uh, JavaScript. Introducing 7.1, we have actually have aggregate queries available via the server side uh, uh, mirror feed API as well as with mirror JS. See? Uh, the theme, our default theme, is actually now based off of mirror, uh, Bootstrap 4. We're very excited about that. We're actually, uh, Evan, our lead developer on that, uh, was very excited about the, the improvements in Bootstrap 4. Um, he's got a great session on uh, CSS and why it's cool uh, later today. I recommend everyone who's interested to see that, check that out. And also, the default theme is no longer actually part of Mirror's repo. It's a separate project that when you install Mirror, it actually pulls that down and installs it. It basically checks if you have a default theme. And if you don't have a default theme, it will say, well, I'll just go pull down the Mirror's de default theme. So you don't need to have it if you don't want it. You can have your own default theme, but uh, it's managed as a separate project. Mirror.js is also managed as a separate project now, and which is important really because it's not necessarily something that is, goes one-to-one -one with uh, your Mira uh, API because it can be used it's on the client. So as part of that, as we released Mirror.js as a node NPM. So there's a lot more use cases that we get into like a RESTful connectivity or just JSON API that allows you to uh, use Mira in really uh, a new way, just, in, well, just like when you're moving to Docker or moving containerization, you start to kind of rethink how you, uh, what your application is in the first place and how it's deployed and how it fits in to other, within other applications. The uh, Mira.js as a tool to consume and interact with Mira's content, JSON API, is kind of allows you to rethink and, and kind of approach it in a fresh new way about what Mirror is and how it fits into your business applications. Uh, very similar to this, uh, going with this, we have a Mirror 7.1 has a ORM assembler and scaffolder, and basically all this is, it's simple, but we're very excited about it, we're it, having it and very excited about where it can go in the future is, is to allow uh, you to use JavaScript, sorry, let, use the, the Mirror admin to define you know, Mira ORM entities that can then be pop, been accessed via Mira JS or the JSON API. So you don't actually need to get into the CFML to define objects. You can find your objects just straight right there in Mira's core. We have improved JSON and REST API with improved OAuth 2 workflows, client credentials, authorization code, implicit password. We're very excited about that, and. Uh, the last thing is that you know these mirror ORM entities that you create with the assembler, or if you hand spun them with your own code, they're actually auto wired to have Swagger uh, definitions generated for you, which allows you to to integrate with third party tools fairly seamlessly. Swagger is a part of the uh, or derived from the Open API initiative, which allows basically a self describing making the API and the entities that are presented are available via the JSON API, you can actually access a description of how you interact with that, those entities, which allow you to, uh, we'll have part of my presentation, uh, the last part of today is just to show a little simple example of that, and it's very, very, very exciting. So anyway, I'm, that's just a high level uh, list of the things that I'm pretty geeked out about, and I think it all comes together. Uh, uh, it's very, very exciting time for Mira. And we also have a new uh, UI 
that I forgot to do a screenshot of, but we're very excited about our, our, our new branding, kind of taking the branding that Ryan talked about at the beginning of the, this, this chat and projecting it throughout all our products. All right, so now I'd like to introduce our uh, Sean Schroeder. <laughs> Got the title. <laughs> 